the subcommittee uh, will come to order. Uh, this is the third in a series of hearings on the Declaration of Principles signed by President Bush and uh, Iraqi Prime Minister Malik on November 26, 2007. The Declaration appears, uh, and I underscore appears, to be a pledge by the two leaders to negotiate a number of substantial commitments. Most significantly, the Declaration suggests uh, an indefinite U.S. military presence in Iraq with multiple responsibilities to be assumed by our armed forces. <laughs> Let me read into the record excerpts from the Declaration, which, re which reflect some of the most significant of those responsibilities. Supporting the Republic of Iraq in defending its democratic system against international and external threats. Providing security, assurances, and commitments to the Republic of Iraq to deter foreign aggression against Iraq that violates its sovereignty and integrity of its territories, waters, or airspace. Supporting the Republic of Iraq in its efforts to combat all terrorist groups, at the forefront of which is Al-Qaeda, Saddamis, and all other outlaw groups, regardless of affiliation, and destroy their logistical networks and their sources of finance, and defeat and uproot them from Iraq. I would note that the, Decla the Declaration of Principles is not just about military commitments, but also includes a broad political and economic agenda that involves significant and possibly open-ended commitments and obligations. For the third time in three months, we have invited the administration to explain the import of this document to the Congress and to the American people. And for the third time, they have declined our invitation. I'd note for the record, on January 29th, Chairman Tom Lantos sent in an invitation to the Secretary of, S of State, Condoleezza Rice, asking her or uh, someone she designated to testify at this hearing. The State Department responded that no representative would appear on the grounds that the agreement to, to be negotiated was still preliminary. This co seems to contradict a January 25th New York Times report that a 15-page draft proposal does, in fact, exist. The State Department informed me that Ambassador David Satterfield would be briefing members of the Foreign Affairs Committee in classified session yesterday. I could have attended that briefing and, according to the State Department, could have asked unclassified questions and received unclassified responses that I then could discuss in public. Well, I find that unsatisfactory. It's my position that the American people have a right to be fully and directly informed as to the intentions of this administration regarding any agreement with the government of Iraq. The American people have ideally for that right. Almost 4,000 of our sons and daughters have died in that conflict, and tens of thousands have been seriously injured possibly hundreds of thousands of innocent Iraqi civilians have been killed and millions have been forced to flee their homes and are now refugees in neighboring countries. Furthermore, the financial cost of this war is on its way to a trillion dollars with no end in sight. And 
the record of this administration in terms of consulting with Congress has been abysmal. As Senator Hagel, uh, our Republican colleague in the other body, has said in regards to the run-up to the war, the Bush administration considered Congress, and these are his words, to be an adversary, an enemy in fact, that's what he said, and a constitutional nuisance. Well, so be it. We will be a nuisance. I find it particularly disturbing that the Bush administration has even ignored State Department regulations requiring that, and again I'm reading from DOS, the Department of State regulations, the following. The appropriate congressional leaders and committees are advised of the intention to negotiate significant new international agreements, consulted concerning such agreements, and kept informed of developments affecting them. I've checked with the House leadership, and I've checked with the leadership committee, it was that of the House Armed Services Committee, and there has been no such consultation unless you count the classified briefing that occurred yesterday. There has been one exception to this lack of consultation and transparency, and that occurred just this week. Secretary Gates appeared before the Senate and House Armed Services Committee on Wednesday and seem to minimize the declaration of principles as nothing more than a uh, press release. He testified that the administration is not seeking to make, and in fact he pledged that it would not make, security commitments to defend Iraq. All that is being negotiated, he said, is a standard status of forces agreement that governs the conduct of U.S. forces in another country. Now, on its face, this would appear to be a major reversal of the administration's position. So it's all the more important now to remove any con confusion and explore the apparent contradictions between the Declaration of Principles signed by our President, George W. Bush, and the testimony of Secretary Gates. We will reissue our invitations to the administration once more in an effort to achieve definitive clarity for the American people. This is just simply too important an issue, given the past six years and our involvement in